Mm-hmm. We're back again. It's episode two, two. of the Movement Podcast. Mm-hmm. I trust that you enjoyed the first one yeah. because we did, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Dr. Caleb. And my name is Seth. Welcome to the Movement Podcast. If mm-hmm. you haven't, please do consider subscribing. Do not forget to leave a like on the video and yes, also please. to leave a comment down below, just sharing your thoughts about everything that we would have shared. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the vision of the movement. Last yes. week we spoke about who we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, today we're just going to really zero in on the vision on and on how we came to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. And one thing that I always say mm-hmm. is that the vision is not separate from the visionary. Yeah, very true. <laughs> the vision is not separate from the visionary. So, for us to understand um, where we are, it would be good for me to just share. I think a very crucial story of. How all of this started. Yeah, man. We want to okay. hear. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've actually <laughs> shared this with you. <laughs> yeah, I really have. I think I only got glimpses. Just okay. hear the stories here, there, and there. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay. So today, I think maybe I'll, I'll try and, and, and share as much as I can about yeah. uh, this vision. So where can we say it started? Let's start from who I am. I started, I, I'm a PK. I'm a fastest kid. <laughs> right. so i was yeah. born into i was pretty much born into christianity right mm-hmm. my parents were elders before they became pastors of a church plant mm-hmm. so i pretty much knew everything as it pertains to church <laughs> <laughs> yeah we knew that at first we'll get in we'll find people praying in tongues and after that <laughs> we'll start singing the fast songs people will start dancing then oh, we'll yeah. sing the slow songs <laughs> and maybe after two or three songs you know oh god <laughs> people start praying some start breaking out in tongues mm-hmm. the pentecostals start overreacting and doing all sorts of shenanigans you know we now knew then after that or well, they're offering right? oh yeah after offering then they'll invite ask the kids to come and go to Sunday school. <laughs> All yeah. right. Anyway, so I knew stuff pertaining to church. Mm-hmm. Um, then later on, my parents then went on to plant a church yeah. in Ebenezer. That's mm-hmm. another city church of under the Pentecostal Assemblies of Zimbabwe. And mm-hmm. there, again, um, I guess I was more involved with ministry. I was born again in 2006, by the way, in February. Oh, wow. Were you born? I was four You're four years, years old. old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah. I was born again in ah. 2006. But through all this, I had not really established a genuine relationship with God. Oh, yeah. You know, so I even recall having a particular conversation with a friend of mine around about 2013, 2014, mm-hmm. where she was asking me, hey, so you're going to be a pastor when you grow up? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to be a pastor. <laughs> Maybe a motivational speaker, but... <laughs> oh, God, imagine you as a motivational a, speaker. <laughs> I'd actually do well, but trust the process. <laughs> the- <laughs> I anyway, I'll do well. Trust, <laughs> believe in yourself. That's the process. <laughs> do what makes you happy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so <Yeah. laughs> fast forward to 2014, I refused. I was like, no, I'm not going to be a pastor. What do you think this is? Mm-hmm. All right. And little did I know that actually God had a plan, mm, you know? Yeah. Then finally, fast forward to 2015, when I went to medical school, I'd actually planned, because my whole life I'd been known as a church boy. Yeah. I used to play <laughs> drums in church, I was on the worship team and all of that. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I, 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 I wanted to just dissociate myself from the title of church boy. Mm-hmm. So got to hanging with some friends I had just met, um, got to doing silly stuff, but for some reason in my heart, I knew that there was something. So there was some level of restraint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There was always some level of restraint in my heart until I think six weeks in, Mm -hmm. somehow one of my big brothers in the faith just invited me to join. No, no. Actually, the first part is one of my sisters invited me to join the choir and I refused. I was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> they invited me to join the campus fellowship at school. Oh, I yeah. refused. I was like, we're not doing that. But then mm-hmm. I just somehow attended, 
you know because deep down like i said yeah there was still a nudge you think that would raise a child in the way they should grow mm. <laughs> like some, <there's laughs> they would not depart you <laughs> from the t- <laughs> you try to run <laughs> but i can assure you <laughs> There will always be that thing. Yeah. There will always be that grip in your heart that you know that actually I think this is really Yeah, good. this is really, yeah. So I kind of dodged a bit for those first six weeks. I dodged. Mm-hmm. Then this one random day, um, one someone who then grew to be like a very close friend of mine who I actually call my sister. Oh, yeah. And I, she invited me to her room for to play keyboard because she had a keyboard. I hadn't played an instrument in <laughs> many in weeks at this time. point, right? So I'm like, what? You have a keyboard? I'm going to come through so I can play mm-hmm. a bit. Little did I know that the day that I chose to go mm-hmm. was the day that they were having choir practice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I end up oh. by the, you know, by their dorm, I was like, hey, I was actually coming to see you. She was now going up to her room for choir. Mm-hmm. And I was like, then he's like, oh, really? True, to come through. Mm-hmm. So now in my head, I'm, not, I'm so clueless. I'm like, I'm going to play the keyboard. keyboard. <laughs> Only to get in there and there's like, <laughs> a crew of people there. And, and all I'm like, like on you. <laughs> what are we doing? Does she not go and introduce me and say he plays uh, keyboard? Uh, I was like, hi. <laughs> So as he got in, I guess you just have to keep up appearances. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things you grow up with if you're a pastor's kid. <laughs> you learn how to keep up appearances. So I'm like, oh, diplomatic. I'm like, yeah, cool. Let me play. Let me play. They mm-hmm. start singing and I start playing. I start playing. I was like, I was feeling the song. I used to play a lot of nice chords mm-hmm. back then. Now I can't do it. <laughs> and then after that, they were like, oh, by the way, we're ministering at church this Sunday. You should come and play for us. Since you what? Since you practice. So me, I'm mm. like unassuming. I'm like, anyway, it's cool. I'm just going to go play, then play come back. Then come back. <laughs> so I get there, we play. The song goes, we, everything happens. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, okay, I don't know. Will I come back? Will I not? Still shaky. Then they had a conference now, which they organized mm-hmm. in about, yeah, it was May. So this, yeah, this is now coming into that six weeks I was yeah. talking about. Mm-hmm. My first six weeks at school. We came, we, we went for that conference. I decided to attend. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> and as I was seated in that <laughs> conference, I can't tell you exactly what happened or exactly what I heard. Wow. But something just changed in my heart. I was like, you know what? This is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Literally, it was just a split second decision. <laughs> And I'm very sure you don't even remember what people say it in that no. meeting. You just <laughs> we were actually watching videos. Oh wow! Yeah, because there was no actual preacher. We were mm-hmm. watching videos, do Bible study together. Because right. there wasn't a guest speaker for that oh. particular conference. Okay. So I was like, <laughs> I just made the decision, bro. Like literally, just made the decision. Then we went back to school because we were staying uh, at the church. Yeah. We went back to school, and. I just knew something had changed because even <laughs> you know what crew. this reminds me mm. of our uh, our first episode. Mm. Uh, you say that God moves with the moving people. Mm. <laughs> I think the particular time you made the decision to move, that's when God was like, "Oh, he's moving." <laughs> True. Let me capture it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was just at the right place at the, the right, right time. Because like all these things I'm even telling mm-hmm. you. At what point was I going to know that these people were there for quiet? <laughs> First of all, at what point was I even going to... Because now when I was at the conference, I don't remember, like, what really <laughs> got me to change. Because wow. the word wasn't even like, ah! Yeah. It was simple. It was a simple teaching on guardrails, just having boundaries oh, as a Christian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so how I then just, I just decided to change. I was like, you know what? Let me not run away. Let me... <laughs> <laughs> and from that day, I never missed a service. Wow. I never missed a conference. I wow. never missed a Bible study meeting. I mm. was consistent from that point, right? Then come that semester, that was my first semester, come round about July mm-hmm. when I was in the bus, we were going for, I think it was an end of term all night prayer that we were having at oh. church. So now we're driving there and I don't know. <clears throat> 
I used to have a page for my drum and I was like oh, yeah when I'm yeah. in China I'm going to be doing a lot of <laughs> drumming I'm going to be doing it so that was the page for that yeah. it was called Unleashed Being mm, nice <laughs> it was called Unleashed Being so I was like yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to play sing, I'm going to play I'm going to do all you know what I'm saying little did I know that um, actually God was unleashing something in me and it was not what I thought it was <laughs> right so <laughs> now on that bus right mm-hmm. I think it was the first time I was going to lead a song I don't know, was I leading prayer or leading a worship song? It was a worship mm-hmm. song. So I was like in prayer and prayer. And that's where this name just dropped in my heart. Wow. I can't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was not even praying about vision or where to go. But that's when it just dropped in my heart. Wow. And I recall even changing the page name mm-hmm. from Unleashed being to the rise of a chosen generation. generation. What it was going to be about, I had no idea. Mm. I just knew that this was something that God had put on my heart. I had no vision. I had no mm-hmm. mission. I just had that. Wow. I was like, okay. And progressively from 2015 mm-hmm. of July, I feel like God began to work a work in me. Because mm-hmm. um, I think I've, I've mentioned this to you before. Yeah. That before you can actually lead people or before others can follow your vision. hmm you yourself must be a manifestation of that vision. Of that particular vision. You, know, yes. you yourself must be an example of that mm, vision. Yeah. You know, so mm. if we're talking about a rising generation, mm-hmm. have you yourself risen? Reason. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking wow. about, um, what is our aim and our vision? Let's just go back to that. Which anyway, is... if we're talking about inspiring a generation to mm-hmm. build a relationship to with Jesus, Jesus Christ and to mm-hmm. walk in their God-given um, purpose, purpose by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Are you those things? Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. from 2015, I believe God started to weave that into my mm-hmm. heart. You know, I started to become, and at this point, this very vision, I had not penned it down. Mm-hmm. It was just something that something God was working in, in me. <laughs> God was working in me gradually, mm-hmm. gradually, gradually. And Bear in mind, at this point, it's just a Facebook page. I haven't really posted much. <laughs> and, and I think around about 2016, oh, 2017, God. I posted a video of me preaching. And I was sharing a word. Nothing very captivating. It was just, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's just a normal, <laughs> a normal sharing. I posted oh, it on. Is it that video that mom posted the other day? I'm not sure which one. <laughs> But I'll find it and then I'll yeah. just attach it to this video. So I just posted the video and I found that I actually like teaching the word of God, mm-hmm. you know, and it's something that in the years God started to weave into my heart again. Yeah. All right. And what I noticed, especially from 2016 coming to 2019, God would continually just put me in leadership places. Mm hmm. And those leadership roles actually helped me to grow as a Christian. <laughs> okay. Because you, you are being given responsibility over others. Oh, yeah. So that means you yourself must be an example to them. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So One from the other, the pressure to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was definitely pressure <laughs> to grow. It gets to you. <laughs> and I remember this funny experience. I, I'm sure many people can relate. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I'd heard about praying long. Mm-hmm. Praying at least, at least an hour. So I'm like... Yeah, I'm not a Christian, so <laughs> I'm not a strong believer. I'm a leader, so I should pray for an hour. Pray then I, I was like, yeah, I'm fasting today. Mm. At lunchtime around, oh, lunch was at 11.50 to about 1 something. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, today I'm going to go to my room and pray for an hour. And then I'll come back for classes. I go, I pray, I pray, I pray about every single thing. thing. I pray for everyone, everything that pertains to my life. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, we've pushed one hour. I open my eyes. It's only 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, God. I, <laughs> I can't believe it. I was, I, was like, I was so demotivated. I'm like, okay, so if we've just done oh, 15 minutes, man. all my prayer points are done. Are done. <laughs> so that's how far God has taken me from. You know? And from teaching, I used to read KJV. Mm-hmm. I think I've mentioned this. I used to read KJV. Yeah, so I used to sound so it. deep. Every scripture I would quote, I would quote word for word <laughs> from KJV. I used to memorize. Ah, my God. <laughs> anyway, that was just part of the growth process. Mm, so I realized yeah, that yeah. in that, God was weaving something in my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, and just. Um, those those moments of growth he was mm-hmm. weaving something in my heart 
come 20, wow. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. I then became, ah, 2018, I became Campus Fellowship Vice President. 2019, wow. I became okay. Campus Fellowship Vice a, a President. <laughs> Talk about growth. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so now at this point, I'm with the people, I'm the president. So what I say goes, right? Mm-hmm. This one particular day, I called the leaders. It was a holiday, so mm-hmm. no one has an excuse. I oh, called yeah. the leaders to, to the room and I'm like, okay, guys. So since we're here, I'm going to set this timer to two hours. Mm-hmm. No one is going to leave this room until these two hours elapses. Yeah. And we're going to be praying. <laughs> <laughs> so now, can you already see the contrast? Yeah. The guy who went to medical school and the guy who came out of mm. medical school. So yeah. throughout this whole process, God was working in me. Wow. The vision. Mm-hmm. The moment I set foot back here in Zimbabwe on a more permanent basis in mm. 2019, I went for a mission trip, came, ah, before the mission trip, actually, I came and the Thursday of my arrival, I was still jet lagged, but then I went for an all night prayer. Mm -hmm. And at that all night prayer, it was not, yeah, that was 2020, Mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah. I went for that all night prayer and a prophetic word was released over me that God was going to give me an apostolic mandate to the youth. Mm -hmm. At that point, it it made sense because already God has been speaking to me yeah. about certain things as mm-hmm. time went on. Yeah. And they're registering in my spirit. So by the time this particular prophecy came, mm-hmm. I had no doubt about it. I oh. knew that, okay, this is about to, to be real. All right. All right. And this <laughs> is 2019. All right. I don't do much. I wow. don't rush into doing anything, which is something I believe many of us need to learn as it pertains to vision. To vision, yeah. The fact that yeah. God has given to you now does not mean you should do it now. Exactly. In the sense that if, oh, he's given me, it's a church, you launch it now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yes. Wait. Proverbs, uh, it should be Proverbs 19. Mm-hmm. A verse 2. Let's quickly just read that. Yeah. Proverbs. Oh, okay. Proverbs 19, verse 2. The Bible says, Desire without knowledge is not good. Mm. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? I'll read another translation. Mm hmm. Where it says enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Oh, man. <laughs> so <laughs> when God gives you a vision, the next step that will follow is for you to grow in knowledge. Okay. Mm-hmm. And by knowledge, I'm not just talking about how to run the vision, the vision but knowledge yeah. of God himself. Mm-hmm. Because that's when you come into your true identity in him. Yes, yes. He'll so begin true, to so reveal who he is to you and who you are to him. Mm. Right? Yeah. And as you begin to grow in that, he forms you into a person that can actually sustain the vision. Mm. He'll form you into the person that is actually a manifestation of the vision. You wow. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You become the message he has called a you to preach foundation. before you go and preach the message. Mm. Jesus Christ was our savior before he came to save the world. Mm. Right? So much so that when he came to the earth, he kept on telling us that he came to save the sea <laughs> and the lost. Mm. Right? Yeah. So before you can fulfill a vision, before you can preach a particular message consistently, mm-hmm. God must first make you that message. That message. Your life must be that message. All mm-hmm. right. So from uh, throughout that whole period, I feel like that's what God was forming in me. All right. And I was able also to manifest that vision under somebody else's vision, mm-hmm. under the spaces that God had put me to serve. I was able to see fruit Hmm. You know, from the example that I was setting, from the messages I was sharing, from everything that I was doing, I was able to see fruit. So that's when I knew that actually this thing is for real. Hmm. It's not just a thought. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that uh, came to me in a moment of enthusiasm and Mm -hmm. zeal. 
but it's genuinely something from God. Wow. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I had become it and I could feel, you know. Yeah. Then came 2020 when I went to Zambia mm-hmm. for for a few, I was there for 10 months in total. And mm-hmm. as I was in Zambia, I wasn't doing much of ministry when I was there. Mm-hmm. And then I think come May, I, May of 2020, I became so depressed. Mm. <laughs> I became so depressed and I couldn't even tell why I was depressed. You know, that's um, the problem. Mm-hmm. It went on for a very long time. Going to the hospital became very hard. God. Doing anything became very hard for me until this one day when I'd come back from the hospital, my lights were off. I was just lying on the bed. And I was like, no. <laughs> this cannot be yeah, it yeah you know so i set up this was pandemic era by the way in mm-hmm. zambia they never really had that many lockdowns yeah. they didn't have like that stringent of a lockdown so mm-hmm. we still used to go to the hospital come back and all right, around right. so on that particular day i just sat on the on the bed i was like no man there yeah. has to be more more well, yeah i can't be feeling like this when i'm f- filled with the spirit of god mm, yeah so i started to pray mm-hmm. literally i i spent an hour, that heaviness was still on my chest. I pressed on and oh, continued man. pressing on. I think it was after hour two or somewhere close to hour three that I felt a release on my chest. Wow. And at that moment, <laughs> I can't tell you that the Holy Spirit said I should do this or do that. I just knew in that moment that, A, I need to get up and do something. And do something. <laughs> so <laughs> in that time, I then organized mm, a, wow. an online this. This probably was our first wow. online meeting. I organized an online Zoom mm-hmm. meeting. First one, yeah. yeah. For one full week. It was a prayer week. Wow. I was like, we're going to be having a prayer week. Mm-hmm. All right. So a few people joined the group because I would not more than 20 in that group. Mm-hmm. There were very few. We send the Zoom, Zoom links. We take time. We pray, we pray, we pray, mm-hmm. we pray. And by this time, at least God had anointed me and God had helped me to to realize the gift of healing in my life. Yeah. That was like around about 2019 when mm-hmm. certain things just began to happen um, in our ministry. 20, yeah, 2019, mm-hmm. where I recall the first time I actually prayed for someone that was sick. Mm-hmm. Um, a friend of mine had been complaining constantly about his back mm-hmm. and something that yeah you know, i remember this one <laughs> he had been complaining about his back and he'd said i don't know it's been causing me issues da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. and on that particular sunday our pastor had given an instruction that as you are on the bus going to school mm-hmm. you should pray mm. so now i'm like okay fine ladies and like generally everyone should pray like yeah someone yeah. can lead prayer so i'm like okay i'm going to take up this instruction so the following Sunday, actually, that's when we had the healing. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. bro, we're getting on this bus. It's an hour ride from mm-hmm. church to school. So we're getting on this bus ride. I'm like, bro, you're not going to leave this bus until you're healed. healed. <laughs> <laughs> so we lay, I laid my hand on him. One of my friends was also there. We started praying for him, started praying for him, started praying for him. I was a leader by then. So mm-hmm. there were some young ladies who were asking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So I had to kind of leave him for a moment, mm-hmm. go and speak with them and just walk them through the process yeah. what it means and how simple it is I think yeah. by now you already know <laughs> yeah and I prayed for her and not in an instant she started praying in tongues, in tongues. I was like perfect mm, so you wow. for the duration of this bus ride mm-hmm. pray in tongues oh. <laughs> I went to the next lady who started praying ah yeah I won't even talk about that one <laughs> but anyway and then she also had an encounter there but by that wow. time it was time when I at school mm-hmm. so my friend and I kind of separated at some point the next morning we had 5 a.m. prayers as guys. Mm. So it then came through, we're done, we're done. We did our 5 a.m. prayers. I think by 6 a.m. we're done. Before he left, no, before I left because we were in his room. Mm-hmm. He was like, hey, you know yesterday when you prayed for me? Yeah. The pain left, but it's just concentrated in one in area. One then area. I was like, ah, the fact that <laughs> some of the yeah. pain has left yeah. and it's just in one area. Now let's do it. <laughs> just lay in my head. Yeah. I was like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare complete healing. And then it's like, it's gone. gone. I'm wow. like, ah, man. <laughs> this is so amazing. Right? Then the next time again we're on the bus, I was like, ah, guys, how many of you are sick in this bus? Mm. And about seven hands went up. 
Mm. So I was not about to go and lay my hands on certain people. I yeah. feel like God was giving me wisdom as mm-hmm. we went. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if you're sitting next to the person who just said they're sick, let's just pray for them. You will put your hand on them. Mm-hmm. I explain to them like how I usually do yeah. that uh, as it comes to healing, Jesus Christ has already paid the price. Mm-hmm. We are simply delivering yeah. what uh, he has fully, fully paid, paid for. Paid right? For. Yeah. So I ask everyone, lay your hands on them and let's make a prayer of declaration. Mm-hmm. And we all just prayed for two minutes, a few minutes. And I was like, perfect, in Jesus' name. How many are healed? Five people raised their hands. Wow, and I was like, man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> right? Wow. Five people were healed. And there were two who had, uh, I don't recall what was pain, what was wrong with them. Then we started praying for them. Mm. One of them said they were getting better. I don't recall the other one. I, mm. want, I don't want to lie or exaggerate. Mm. So I can't tell you if they were fully healed. Not or not, but at least those five were saying they mm-hmm. were completely healed. So now, by now, I know that this gifting that has been prophesied, that has been said, I have, I have, I have. like <laughs> so much so that we I now think had, from that mm, point it just mm, just a smooth the road. You know, mm-hmm. now you now I know I have this gift. So yeah. like, there's no hiding. Like you know, sometimes people prophesy to you, oh, you have the gift of this, you have the gift of that. <laughs> then you hide for some time. You hide. <laughs> And you're like, but at this point, you can't hide it because now you know it's yeah. happening. I recall mm-hmm. there's a time when my vice president, when I was still a junior, was sick. I was like, let me pray for you. We prayed for her. Mm-hmm. The headache didn't go. <laughs> she was just, I was like, oh, how are you feeling now? And she's like, ah, we well, thank God. I'll, I'll be fine. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess you'll be fine. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, <laughs> this was yeah that was that should have been 2018 Yo. yeah should have been around about 2018 mm-hmm. so now 2019 all these things happen they happen you know i can see god's hand is moving i remember mm-hmm. the last conference that i had where i was supposed to just close the meeting yeah because we had an amazing time and pastor had dismissed us so i was like guys i'm here to just close the meeting mm-hmm. before i close the meeting i had a word of knowledge i'm mm-hmm. like god do i really have to do this so i didn't share the word i'm like mm-hmm. guys i see this and this and this People lift up their hands. I'm like, God, <laughs> we are starting the ki- so I, I know one of those know, meetings. I'm like, oh no, we were supposed to go. The bus is here. <laughs> then I just make a, a prayer. We pray for people. Some say they're healed, and some are like, no, we're not yet healed. And I'm like, nah. You know, I've learned mm. that you can pray for someone twice. It doesn't yeah, mean yeah. you don't have faith. Mm-hmm. It actually affirms your faith. Mm-hmm. Remember, there was that man in the Bible who had. Um, who was blind and Jesus oh, prayed yeah. for him and he says I see men like trees mm-hmm. Jesus prayed for him again wow. then he was completely mm-hmm. healed. completely healed so it's not faithlessness to mm-hmm. pray again mm-hmm. you know it actually affirms your faith your faith because wow. if you didn't have faith you were not even going to <laughs> pray the second time yeah, like, oh, well, it doesn't yeah. work you know so we prayed for some of them a second time I can't tell you if all of them were healed but mm-hmm. I know that the first time some were healed the second time some were healed also mm-hmm. so I was like okay perfect wow. You know, so I started to an extent discipling people in that, just helping them to understand the basics that I had also come to know at that point. I didn't know everything, but mm-hmm. I knew something. So I was able to help them to in that also. Wow. Then I finally left now, came mm-hmm. twenty nineteen, came to Zimbabwe, went to Zambia, then the whole depression story. Then come mm-hmm. to the one week of prayer. This is why the story that I've just shared is significant. Yeah. We we'll start praying. Day one, and I won't say it's uneventful because we we're really pushing in prayer. Yeah. Day two, we we're pushing in prayer. Was it three days or one week? Now I've forgotten. Mm-hmm. But on the last day of prayer, as we were praying, I had another word of knowledge mm-hmm. about someone that had been having excruciating back pain. So mm-hmm. I'm like, guys, who is this? <laughs> and I went, oh, okay, let me not say her name. Mm. Uh, she lifts up and says, hey, it's me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, can we pray for you? Just hold where you're feeling the pain. Pain. And she holds where she's feeling the pain and I pray for her, we pray for her, we pray for her. And after that prayer, the pain was completely gone. gone. Right. So now to me, I'm like, for me, this is a skill. This is to say, Caleb, we are doing this. We are this. doing this. You know. So from 2020, we were doing a lot of <laughs> online meetings. Man. Um, we started what was called Encounter Nights, mm-hmm. where every week, every Friday, we would preach our put up a live stream. Mm-hmm. I'll put up a live stream. We preach, preach, preach every Friday consistently until wow. I came to Zimbabwe, continued it again. Wow. Every week would put up a video. I love the fact that it, it never 
you know the consistency mm. the location didn't affect your consistency yeah <laughs> true mm. you know and then at that point i think by the when i came to zimbabwe that's when we started introducing healing rooms like where would actually um call people ask on the group like maybe mm-hmm. we're having a particular meeting by this time numbers were kind of increasing increasing you know? so we have meetings like hey is there anyone who's sick anyone who's not feeling well let's pray we would have a call have them on the call pray for them i remember i was supposed to share testimonies in the next <laughs> video but anyway yeah yeah one of one of the ones that really marked me was when this particular lady had lumps Mm-hmm. one in her breast and one in her neck we prayed mm-hmm. for her those lumps disappeared wow <laughs> i know <laughs> so at this point over wow. the phone like they disappeared yes you this, just know there was something here and, and then it's this gone wow this was all happening over the phone Man. and i recall by this time zimbabweans were not having things called online meetings they were like <laughs> online meeting yeah spiritual. i think it's an so. attack on the church we can't be using social media and slowly <laughs> but an surely <laughs> slowly but surely everyone started using social media yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and yeah so we had a lot of things that we were seeing i think maybe we can get into depth mm-hmm. about testimonies in the next episode yeah yeah so that's 2020 coming into 2021 i had brothers that i met or along the way that mm-hmm. I got to know when I was in Zambia from here in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So we hadn't really met before. We were just colleagues over the phone mm-hmm. who would invite each other for our various online meetings or share in our in each other's, you know, yeah. Meetings. Then this particular day, I think it was right at the beginning of 2021. I was praying. I was actually in this house, mm-hmm. but we still used to stay in Harare. Yeah. I was in this house right there and I was really praying. I was like, God, and I felt this burden that at the middle of the year we were supposed to have our a an in person meeting, mm-hmm. and I think the COVID regulations were starting to, you know, become better by yeah, then. So we were able yeah, to. So I was like, just... God, what is this? Why have I been feeling this way? And I knew we were supposed to have some sort of worship gathering, mm-hmm. you know, with young people. Yeah. Then around about yeah, around about those times, not too long after that, mm-hmm. I'd gone home. I was now on a call with my friends. Namely, Genius and Marco. Yeah. They run a foundation called Revive Hope Foundation. So we're talking. Mm -hmm. And one of them just randomly mentions that, oh, you know what? I've been feeling like (laughs) God is saying we need to, I uh, rather they were saying we want, I would Mm -hmm. like to have Mm -hmm. a, you know, Mm -hmm. person, a worship, yeah, like a worship festival Mm -hmm. and just gather young people to come together. And I'm like, Bro, the fact mm. that we're having this conversation right now <laughs> at the beginning of the year, God was telling me this. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. God was telling me that that's that we should um have something like that. And at that point I thought I was supposed to do it myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And wow. the fact that we were having that conversation together made me realize that actually I'm not supposed to do this by myself. Mm. And I feel like wow. that's what really Birthed the unity that we run with. Oh yeah, as the rise of chosen generation, Very we true. don't do things by ourselves. Mm-hmm. I don't feel we need to. Yeah, we don't because <laughs> we are kingdom minded. Mm-hmm. You know, and this, these are. Th- I'm showing you the roots where mm-hmm. these things come from, come from. So that wow. when you run with it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So right from the get go, as you can see, mm-hmm. we had our first meeting in conjunction. I don't even want to say in conjunction in mm-hmm. partnership with Revived Hope. We actually wow. invited other youth groups to come through some were actually ministering on the day and i want, oh, wow. I want to tell you it was an amazing day mm. Mm. It, it was actually quite an amazing event yeah and wow. it launched us into zimbabwe because for me i was like no one knows me in this oh country. yeah so how am i even supposed to do anything who is going funny to funny enough um I had not met you by then, mm. so I, I saw one guy post mm. the arise um thingy okay this is new <laughs> and somehow somehow i was so eager for this thing to reach us this side of zimbabwe <laughs> you know what it's so funny i was so eager for this thing to come and reach us here because mm-hmm. this side was just quiet mm-hmm. and it was just uh i think it was just a group of people who have been revived in different spaces and what was lacking is to bring people together 
it was that kind of environment. So mm. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and at at that point honestly I was still thinking I was going to stay in Harare it's mm-hmm. 2021. So yeah. everything from that in person meeting that we had I think word started to kind of spread. Mm-hmm. I think from the, I'm not saying that I pioneered anything but I want you to mm-hmm. hear me carefully. From that point I think I became more aware of what was happening in the environment oh, what God was yeah. doing in the atmosphere yeah. what God was doing in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm many youth groups started to rise up mm-hmm. and yeah, i'm not saying true. that's when they started mm-hmm. but that's when they started to become more you know yeah people started to be aware mm-hmm. of what was going on mm-hmm. it was yeah so many young people groups so mm-hmm. many youth groups mm-hmm. so many movements were starting to just pop up come up oh, wow. right and i know to some extent um our unity has really impacted many other groups yeah, and i know yeah, for so, sure that so true yeah mm-hmm. what we started you know and what we set in motion had mm-hmm. a huge impact on not only the young people of zimbabwe mm-hmm. but even abroad yeah because one of the things that we're praying about in at our first meeting was really the young people of this generation mm-hmm. you know for us to actually experience genuine genuine revival revival you know so we then after that first one we had our second one um Yeah, we had our second one and that's when I moved here. Mm. I moved to Bulawayo. You know? yeah. I moved to Bulawayo. I was like, ah, I'm here for medicine. So <laughs> to chill. Do ah. this thing, finish. Then what? <laughs> Then we can start working. Start, work, start working, <laughs> do ministry again. And I was baptized with another uh with with more depression. <laughs> something ah. like that. I had a traumatic uh, life experience mm-hmm. which um really hit me hard oh, and man. I was so depressed mm-hmm. again so now medicine doesn't mean much to me because I'm in a terrible space yeah man. nothing really means much to me at this mm-hmm. point until the holy spirit reminded me again that wow. what will take it's, you out of it, this you know it's it's so funny how he's so committed <laughs> to to really like <laughs> make sure that you're in a space whereby you can get up and work again yeah you know and i don't i'm not saying it's the holy spirit who gave me depression all these times no Mm-mm. when you don't obey what god is telling you in your heart what happens is you move yourself out of his protection mm. you move yourself out of his will mm-hmm. so now at that point you are vulnerable to attack to attack and i feel the enemy saw that mm-hmm. and he found a breach in mm-hmm. the walls and he was like he entered and he hit me and mm-hmm. now i'm there like okay how can i come out of this i was in a terrible state 